So, hello. Welcome to today's lesson in our study of complex analysis. And today we're talking about complex integration. So, I'm Bredo Kandrin of a final year student of mathematics, KNUSD. And I'll be taking you through this lesson. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. And you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't so that you can be notified of new videos. So, let's start. So, in this video, we will look at integration with complex functions. Note that in our previous videos, we've done differentiation with complex functions. So, now we are moving on to integration. So, we will learn how to parameterize the most standard path and also learn when the path is important and when it is not. So, that's the main objective for this video. So, let's start with a theorem on contour integrals. So this is what the theorem states. If a function f of c is continuous on a directed smooth curve gamma and if z is equal to z of t and we have an interval t line between e and b and if this is a parameterization of gamma then then integral of our complex valued function f of z along our directed smooth curve gamma is equal to what we have here so we parameterize the path right then we have this representation so especially this particular equation you have to um note it down because we are going to use that a lot so try and understand the term first it's it's not difficult at all okay so now some few notes note that a smooth curve as seen in the theorem so this smooth curve we're talking about as seen in this theorem is a curve that does not cross itself and has no sharp corners okay so that's what it means then two we parameterize a curve to preserve its direction so someone might ask you why do we parameterize the curve so we do that to preserve its direction okay so now let's look at some of the parameterization that we do okay so we have our smooth curve gamma and depending on the path which it takes we are coming to learn the parameterization for it so to parameterize a straight line then we use this particular um equation as we can see here okay where z1 is the initial point and z2 is the final point and our t lies between 0 and 1 okay then to parameterize a circle we have this here where this z naught here is the center of the circle and this r happens to be the radius of the circle then if it's a straight circle we know that when you have a straight circle then we have 2 pi here right so 360 degrees so if a straight circle then our t lies between 0 to 2 pi then if it's a semicircle so you know semicircle then it's going to be from 0 to pi the same thing this is the center and this is the radius but it's going to be 0 to 2 pi. So if it is a quadrant or a quarter of a circle, if it's a quarter of a circle, then you should know that you'll be having between 0 to pi on 2, or maybe between pi on 2 to pi, depending on the region where we find ourselves. Okay. So note this in general, every parameterization, in every parameterization, the lower bound of t gives the starting point and the upper bound of t gives the end point. In this way, the direction of the curve will always be preserved. Okay. So, and the second thing to note is that, you know, this is the same from the rules of integration that we know. So, when you are integrating um, along your direct smooth curve gamma and you have two functions, then you can separate them right so then if the path is made up of two separate paths 
say gamma 3 which is made up of gamma 1 plus gamma 2 then we have this equation here in its holes so when you look at these two equations that we have here you realize that they, are, they make sense and they are very simple to understand okay so we are coming to take a second theorem and in our next theorem we will talk about independence of path since there are some functions we do not care about the path they take when they are integrated as long as the starting point and the end point are the same integration with different paths will always yield the same results so let's take note of this note here too okay all right so let's take that theorem so that theorem is called the independence of path so he says that when you have a function, a complex valid function f of z, and it's continuous on a contour gamma from z1 to z2. So z1 happens to be the initial point, and z2 happens to be the ending or the final point. And f of z has an antiderivative. f, capital F of z, side that, and our f prime of z, capital is equal to f of z on gamma. Then the integral of f of z dz along the contour gamma is given by what we have here okay so actually you know complex analysis is a pure mass cause so what we've been doing is you know a lot of term term and the rest okay so let's try to solve two questions okay to explain some of what and um, some of the terms we've stated so far and to help you get a deep and a better understanding of what you've done so far okay so let's take some examples we will take two of them so the first one says compute the following integrals giving it corresponding path all right so we are computing this particular integral here and we are going to be giving two different paths so let's start with the first path so you see that with the first path, this is what we have. And you can see this is the path is a line. You can see we have a line here, right? So we have a line here. And our initial point, you see this is our initial point, and it gets here. So that means our initial point, Z1, is equal to negative i. And our final point or ending point, Z2, is equal to 2 plus i and it's along a line right so when you're going to parameter right you're going to use that of a line right so you're going to use this one so solution since the path is a line the parameterization will be this part this thing here and you should know why I just went there it's in the table there so you have to know the table and our initial point was negative i and our final point was 2 plus i as I stated here, right? So we just have to make substitution inside this. So making substitution, we are going to have z of t will be equal to negative i plus t, then 2 plus i minus minus i, where our t is between 0 to 1. So when you compute what is inside here, you are going to get z of t will be equal to negative i plus t, then 2 plus 2i, then we have the same range okay so from this theorem so i hope you've done you've understood what you've done so far right so from this theorem the content integral theorem it says that if f of z is continuous on a directed smooth scale gamma and if z is equal to z of t and we have this interval here it's a parameterization of gamma then this is the formula we use to compute the integral okay so no, that I'm going to state that here. So that's what I've stated here. Okay, so that means that we will be interested in finding z prime of t, right? So we have z of t to be this from here. We found it, and from here, you know, the interval is between a and b. So that means our a is zero and our b is one. So we also have that one. So right now the only thing left for us is z prime of t so when we differentiate what we have here with respect to t we're going to have 2 plus 2i all right 
so now what we do is that we have to make substitution so that means that integral of z dz along the contour gamma is equal to so the limit of integration is 0 to 1 so as you can see here then our f of z our function z of t is what we have here so we make that here and our z prime of t is what we had here so we bring that one here okay so after this the rest is normal commutation and integration so the next thing to do is to you know try and multiply this two through so when we do the multiplication we are going to have this when you multiply you're going to have this as well okay, so you can take your time to do the multiplication it's very simple but note that i squared is equal to negative one so that means wherever we find i squared we can put negative one there right so we make that substitution here and making further simplification we have this further simplification again gives us this all right so we had a very long something but i've been able to reduce it to something which is very simple so now the next thing to do is to do our integration okay so you know when we integrate this we are going to get negative 2it integrating this will give us 8it squared over 2 and integrating this will give us 2t and our limit of integration 0 1 so now we can put that in okay we can simplify this so this will go here 1 it goes here 4 then we have what we have here then now we can put in our limit of integration so putting our limit of integration will give us wherever you find t we put one there and you know, when you put zero there it will automatically go away and so that's why i didn't bring that part so when you put in you're going to get negative 2i plus 4i plus 2 and when you simplify this then you're going to get 2 plus 2i right so this happens to be the integral that we're looking for there so yeah this is our answer when we parameterize with a line I hope that's well understood. Okay, so let's take a different path. The same question, a different path. So the same function, given that the path is a quarter of a circle with center i and radius 2 along this particular region. Okay, so we're also going to solve this. So you see this one is a quarter of a circle. It's a circle, right? So remember here, I, in a table, Yes, when it's about the parameterization, I made reference to that. So, if it's a circle, this is it. But depending on whether it's a full circle, it's a semicircle, or it's a quarter of a circle, we that will determine the range that we have. So, this because it's a quarter of a circle, then that means the range is going to be, the interval will be 90 degrees, okay? So, that's why from the question we had 3 over 2 pi to zero or 270 degrees to zero degrees um or 360 degrees any of them and right, so the parameterization of this circle is giving us what we have here so from the table you should know that where the center is i and the radius is two and this was the region so when you make substitution you are going to have this but from the team we know we are going to find the derivative of our function with respect to t so when we do that we are going to have so when you differentiate this you are going to have 2i e i t so the formula for our integral is given by what we have here from the theorem so when you screw up you see that so you know this is going to replace this and this is going to replace this and our limit of integration so this is going to be our e and it's going to be our b so right now we have everything being equal we can write this down so when you write this down and <laughs> the rest of the thing is to you know do simplification and do your integration so we first have to multiply these two so when you do the multiplication you are going to end up in this then we know that we have i squared here but i squared is the same as negative one right so when you put it here then we have what we have here then you know when you have the integral of let's from a to b f plus j dz 
maybe let's say yes where f and j are all functions of z you can write it of this form it was part of one of the theorem if you remember so that means that we can rewrite this in this form and you know so that it will become a bit simple for us okay so doing this integration we can bring our negative 2 out and we have this we can bring our 4i out and we have this then the next thing is when we integrate eit we have eit over i then we have our element of integration then when you integrate to e2it we are going to have this we have our element of integration so we want to bring the i out we bring our 2i here then when you put our element of integration in you are going to have this and have that so minus 2 over t i we can rationalize and this will give us 2i because this will be negative 2 over i times i over i then this will give us negative 2i i times i i squared i squared is the same as negative 1 so this negative cancels this and we have 2i so in place of this we have 2i here then here too i cancels i this goes here one it goes here too so that's why we have these two here i mean we've put an element of integration and you should know that e raised to the power zero e raised to the power zero is one and one so now we have these two which we have to compute but know that from the Willis method when you have e i theta it's given as cos theta plus i sine theta where theta is the argument all right so that means we can use that to compute this and that will give us this when you make substitution and note that um this 3 over 2 pi rad in degree is 270 degrees so this is same as that and when you compute this on your calculator you're going to get negative i then with e i 3 pi when you do the same computation you're going to get negative 1 so that means this is giving us negative i and this is giving us negative 1 so we can make substitution so making substitution we are going to have what we have here and 1 minus minus i is 1 plus i 1 minus minus 1 is 2 so when you multiply you are going to get this time this will give us 2i this time this will give us 2i squared this time this will give us 4 but know that i squared is negative 1 so make the substitution you get what we have here then this will give us 2i plus 4 minus 2 and it's the same as 2i plus 2 so see this 2i plus 2 that's the answer when it's along um, um the path is a cut off a circle with center this and that and you see when it was along a straight line we had this 2 plus 2i and you can see that that's the same thing we have for this one 2 plus 2i so here we can see from the examples that the answers are the same and what this tells us is that the function does not care the path it takes as long as the starting and end point are the same so this is an example of the independence of path thing that we're talking about okay all right so um thank you very much and i know this video was a bit technical but don't worry you can go over and try to read outside and trust me you're going to get that so thank you and